<sighs> We're in my sanctuary, as you can see. It's early morning, so it's actually not too hot out right now, but it will get exponentially hot in not too long. We have my special guest, Tekis, in the building. Everybody give a round of applause to Mr. Tekis. Hi, buddy. So yeah, as you guys can see, my, my sanctuary is the backyard. Back up, back up. Damn, we just got a sale, talk to me. But anyways, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna roll up while we do a Q&A, then I'm gonna cook up. I may also do some Duolingo because I'm on a 48 day street going on 49. Before we do the Q&A, I do wanna show you, look at this, look at this rolling tray, bro. Look at that, oh my, W girlfriend. Anyways, question number one, my dog, MXMXM Beats, what's your favorite song you solo produced? So I actually don't think I have a favorite song I've solo produced yet. I've produced a good amount of songs, but a lot of them have been collabs, so like, there's not many that are solo, and that makes it really hard to pick. So yeah, that one is yet to be answered. We will get to that in the future. How can someone juggle two professions at the same time? If you're juggling two professions, you gotta factor in everything that like takes up any time consistently for you. But time management is really gonna be the answer to all of your questions. You're gonna have to figure out when can I cook up consistently? And if you, get the fuck off me. Why do flies like to fucking all up in your face this this whole world to fucking explore but you gotta fucking but yeah you're just gonna have to figure out when you can cook up consistently if there is no time to cook up consistently then you're gonna have to find out when you can sporadically and you're just gonna have to be on that at the end of the day you're gonna have to figure out how to manage your time correctly another thing is gonna be accountability then you're gonna have to ask yourself how can i speed things up so that way i with the short amount of time that i do have i can cook up so it's really gonna be time management self-accountability tips on developing your own sound slash being more unique without things sounding forced. I don't think things sounding forced really is a thing. I'm not gonna lie. I don't believe that that, that just doesn't even sound right. I feel like when you say things that sound forced, it means like too creative to the point where you don't like it or a lot of people won't like it, which is like, you shouldn't be scared to dive into that either. But tips for developing your own sound. There, I feel like everybody's looking for a short, sweet answer to this, and there's really not one. It's just gonna be working really hard, copying the people that you like, and mixing your own personality into it, and then constantly experimenting. Eventually you'll find a sound that becomes popular if you keep going hard and long enough. Not everyone will probably, but I think eventually most people in their lifetime would be able to do that. My boy Martin Sepulveda. 881. I see you leveling slash mixing as you go, but what are some of your rules for the right sound? I don't want the bass to be overwhelming. I want people to be able to turn my beats up really loud. Like there's too many good songs where it's just not mixed correctly and there's a snare or there's a clap or there's a hi-hat or something that is just insanely loud. And um, I want people to be able to blast my shit, you feel me, without suffering ear damage. There's been too many songs where I've been in the car and I'm like, yeah, let me bump this shit and there's a fucking snare that just doesn't let me. Or there's a fucking hi-hat that is just consistently beating my fucking eardrums. I'd probably say those are like probably my only couple of rules and make sure your master settings are good. I had a friend the other day ask me, he was trying to get back into producing, shout out to Drew. And he was like, yo, why does this kick sound garbage? First I was like, well, what kick is it? And then I was offended because it was my kick. But then I was like, yo, what's on your master though? Like, what's your master looking like? Bro, I had a fruity, a default fruity limiter on the master. And basically that, if you don't know anything about producing, that's basically one of the worst things that you can have on the master just sitting there is just a default fruity limiter. It just comes with the program. It doesn't do anything. It makes things sound quiet. It limits them to how loud they can be. It's just not good. So I made him fix his master chain. If you need a free master chain, here's one right here. I got you. But yeah, there's plenty of other ones. I use a few other ones. I guess I'll fucking throw them here too. Fuck it, just fucking leak everything. All right, Deems Music Official. What was your inspiration for starting up the channel? Bro, my inspirations were the fact that there was no channels out here teaching people how to fucking make music. I remember back in the SoundCloud days, I was literally like, tw I'm talking like 2015. I was like, bro, I don't fucking know how to fucking do none of this shit. And I would like ask people on SoundCloud that I looked up to, I'd be like, yo, and they weren't even big, mind you. I'm talking like a thousand, maybe 2000 followers. And they don't answer. They didn't answer at all. None of them did. So I was like, you know what, fuck y'all, I'm gonna figure it out. They probably didn't wanna teach people because it means more competition, means they gotta keep progressing, means things will get harder, but it also means music will sound better. So I really didn't care about the competition aspect. It's very possible they were just busy with their own lives and I'm not trying to say I was entitled to it. I think it's just very frustrating already not knowing how 
to like make music but shout out to nick mira because he was making tutorials at that time so yeah my inspiration was nobody else wanted to make tutorials nobody else wanted to share knowledge nobody else wanted to help so i know exactly how fucking frustrating that was and i just wanted to help people how i i wish i was helped memphis beats gb 1632 trying to grow a tight beat channel what what advice would you give i love making travis gonna cash cardi and lucky beats should i f just focus on one artist or make as much as i want try all of those type beat lanes whichever one does the best for you i would probably ride that one once you start getting more traction you could probably start hitting the ones the genres the lanes the type beats that you wanted to before and just wasn't working out as well how do you make your beats ready for vocals and also how do you go about mixing and mastering the vocals at the end so i don't ever do that part that's not really on me that's more on the engineer side. I'm just a producer. Like, I just I just metro boom and shut the fuck up and go make some beats. Like that's what I do. The only tip I can give you is ozone isotope. Check that out. It has a lot of AI mastering presets and just like mastering presets in general that I love to use. But how do I make beats ready for vocals? I usually just like make sure there's no major leveling errors, so like snares or whatever being too insanely loud or overbearing. And then usually you just turn down the beat a little bit to make headroom for the artist. I mean, that's that's the most probably atypical advice I could give you. Engineers probably would hate me, but. I tried reaching out to you for clearance for a talk to me sample I got from your kit. Bro, that is already a Drake song, brother. I, I don't know what to tell you. Do you use beat stars? If so, do you get paid more for beats or for kits? I'd be surprised y'all can't hear these flies fucking flying past me. Life put me in a situation where a normal job is impossible, so selling beats is all I got. So like, did life take your legs and, and, your, and your knowledge of everything else in life? I don't, I don't really understand. But I did use BeatStars primarily. I now use Shopify. I've made crazy amounts off of BeatStars. And I definitely made the most I've ever made from kits. Still made an okay amount off of beats. And I probably could have made more if I had kept going that route. I turned my type beat channel into a tutorial channel so there was no way to promote my type beats to the people that i was before basically but yeah kits are gonna take way way longer you're gonna have to make tutorial content probably or you're gonna have to make kits for so long that people like just know your stuff you grow a following from doing free kits that require people to follow you to download the kit and then you're gonna have to market your kits to those people that followed you if you do beats it's gonna be basically the same your audience is just gonna be different you'll have your audience be artists instead of producers. Uh, so you can really just pick your poison. Both are gonna be hard and it's like not gonna be quick. So I highly suggest finding something else if you need money like right, right, right now. You could definitely start making some sales within half a year to a couple years. That's probably the general time frame I will say, but I wouldn't expect you to make a bunch of money off rip. And I wouldn't want you to expect yourself to do that because that's just unreasonable. Fastest way you could probably make money it's probably collaborating with people that already have the audience and then building your audience at the same time. You feel me? By doing the steps that I told you earlier. I have miles of melodies, full beats, and unfinished beats. I wanna start collabing with producers for exposures and splits. What's the most efficient way to do this? If you have a bunch of content and you wanna collab with a bunch of other producers, hit the producers up, bro. Have people to send it to. Most efficient way to do this? Like, abuse people like me, man, who have been in the game for years. Almost every producer is looking for new sounds, new material, new stuff to use, blah, blah, blah. All you gotta do is join my Discord, go to the send loops here channel send that put your beat stars put your ig put all of that make sure your stuff is fa i might use it in a video i might use it in a stream other people might use it you never know what's gonna happen we just had an opportunity for drake in there that i got out of nowhere and then i hit everybody up in the discord and told you guys to send stuff and i have flipped a few things in there so we just gonna wait and see what happens but find people like me abuse people like me you know what i'm saying not abuse that sounds weird and fucked up but utilize people like me because it's a transactional thing bro like if your stuff is fire i'm gonna want to use it and what do we both get i get to hear a fire song maybe produced or that we got to work on and you got to get like your first placement. Once that placement hit, the, the song drop, you're gonna get some followers. Like you're gonna slowly get an audience. People gonna recognize you for your work. Hit up the people that have already been in this shit. That's like how you're gonna skip time and make this stuff happen quicker. All right, I gotta stop smoking, bro. My eye leaning. I think that's about it for the mini q and A. I'm gonna go ahead and do Duolingo. If you guys wanna add me on there, I'm gonna do one thing of Duolingo and then we're gonna cook up. If you guys wanna add me on there, Go crazy, 48 day streak, this is about to be 49. I'm going brazy, I'm learning Italian right now. So let me know what y'all learning, you know what I'm saying? Comment what you're learning. I understand. Poi, poi ripetera. 
Grazie. Ho capito. Grazie. I understand. Thank you. Io non parlo bene. Parlo solo. solo. 49 days, yeah, we in that motherfucker. Now for the part y'all probably been waiting for. But yeah, we're gonna cook up a beat now. So listen, listen, listen. This is a dead ass question. Is Mac different than a laptop? Like, is it just Windows versus a uh, Mac? But like, why Mac not a laptop? It's still a laptop. Like, is that just them trying to be different? Is that just Mac trying to be different? Cause bro, it's still a laptop. You putting it on top of your lap. You feel me? You still doing that. It's not like this shit floating or something, bro. You don't, you shouldn't get a whole new name. Maybe that's just a hot take. Maybe it's a hot thought. Either way, I'm gonna shut up. Before we get into the cook up, I wanted to let y'all know we added a bunch of new kits on the holysounds.co website. So you can go get you a bunch of new sounds, stay inspired, and you can learn and become better at making music. So yeah, a link for new sounds down in the description. Make sure you guys go check that out. And there may or may not be a sale going on. So take advantage of that while you can. But anyways, the point I was gonna get to before my sponsor brain entered I was gonna say me and my homie Vito he's this producer in Italy a genius even built his own synthesizer so basically what we did was we collaborated on the kit I sent him a bunch of melodies and ideas that I ran through a bunch of guitar pedals and basically bro in Italy the goat Vito himself recorded ideas on it with his homemade synthesizer so there's 30 samples from me and him collaborating and there's a bunch of samples that he also did solo so I'm gonna preview some of them and I'm gonna use one of them Might have just found the one. I think that's gonna be like an A section or something. And then we can do another sample for another section. So now let's find the other section. I think this is the one. No, I like the, I don't know if it has to be reversed though. That ain't nothing but a little control left click drag, left click on the arm master track button into a alt R situation. That ain't nothing. There we go, yeah. So for the second section, I'm probably just gonna use a cool little drum loop or something. And look, y'all can say whatever this and that. Oh, he just dragging in a pre-made drum loop. Bitch, I still made the drum loop and I may or may not have overcommitted because I forgot my camera per battery percent is already at 50. I'm not trying to take forever doing this. It's still gonna be five, shut up. Now we, all we gotta do is make a baseline for that. So we gonna come back for that. Reverb. I'm sorry if my camera dies. What the fuck was that behemoth? All right, I need 808s and we need like a cowbell or something. So since he is now inspiring to make this beat faster, we're just gonna like kinda.
Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and chop this up to be like this. Camera dead, but dream isn't. We're just gonna finish this little bass line, change these couple notes. good there we just end this here and we put a little synth bass on this one section i'm gonna go to i'm gonna use my holy all-in-one kit it's over 35 kits over 9,000 sounds over 25 gigabytes of inspiration link for that in the description so we're gonna go here drag this in and i'm just gonna get us a baseline going i don't know how i got so hot out of nowhere cut itself that's what i'm about to do if we don't get out of here soon Let's fix these settings Ooh. Yeah, I think we let that ending only happen like once every eight bars. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy paste all of this. And what we're going to do is take out all the accent stuff here for this section and we can even take out the hi-hats here maybe but yeah make sure you guys go get the sample pack man i'm telling you we're gonna do a slowed and reverbed outro over here but yeah that's about it for the video hopefully you guys enjoyed i know you can't see me or nothing but make sure you guys go check out the sound kits i'm gonna play you guys the finished beat right now and